on an advert for War Thunder. Apparently, ships is a bastard offspring that get, never gets talked talked about. I wonder why, Kieran. I wonder why. It's almost like they spent 90% of their marketing budget telling us that no, bigger ships weren't coming because patrol boats were the most unforgotten thing in War Thunder. I remember when they did that. And essentially what they did was they killed any set or any like hype that they ever uh, generated for the fact that ships were coming. Because the term ships alone doesn't inv evoke riverboats, does it? So, in what what seems to be the funniest turn of events, they've now just essentially uh, undo their, 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 their own marketing. I remember they were like, oh yeah, everyone made fun of it. It was boat bathtubs. It was, you know, V8 bathtubs, right? People with a machine gun in a bathtub. That's exactly what boats is and always has been. But it's not fun. It's not fun to watch. It's not fun to look at. It's not fun to listen to. It's something that I've been meaning to make into a video. In fact, I might even just rip this thing from the VOD and actually just put it up on the on channel. But suffice to say, they killed their own marketing hype by telling us that river boats were supposed to be a thing. And now that that naval has been developed further and it has a worse economy and a worse battle raising system than the rest of the game, competitively speaking, they're, they're now telling us that we can get bigger ships I mean, I don't, I, I, I really don't know about you, but I find that that, that rather hypocritical, because Garjan's way of, oh, we're not going to tell the community because the community doesn't need to know, and downplaying everyone's hopes and expectations for, frankly, a fantastic game by just dumping and shitting on your dreams. Not exactly a fun way, and then later they come crying back, oh, we've now got destroyers in the game, oh, we've now got cruisers and shit, ah, oh, fuck off. Look. It's, it's a fucking travesty what they've done to ships. The game's good. Like, low-tier ships are fun. It's, it, I'd say it's actually subject to worse... Like, they've made it worse. And with the advent of these new heavy cruiser turrets, which we found in the files, that have been added recently, I don't see there being a point... I, d I really don't see there being a point of them adding more and more bigger ships. There's no point. You're going back on the word. They're going. They're literally going back on their word to say that bigger ships were never coming to War Thunder in the first place, despite everything they've done. And keep in mind that I haven't necessarily formulated my full thoughts on this, but from what I'm seeing and what everybody's talking about with the upcoming patch, like apparently this upcoming patch is going to be the biggest War Thunder's ever seen. Well, put two and two together. And you'll probably find that they're probably talking about something else. And they're probably going to use it as a marketing term. There is no... I don't know. Ships as a whole... The, it's the economy. It is the economy. If the economy was better, I guarantee you people would play the game. But there are map issues. There are spawn issues. Everything that combines the fact that the reason why people don't play naval in the first place. Anyway. Like, the advert never said the word ship and had two clips of boats and only talked about planes, tanks, and helicopters. Yeah, because they know. And it's the same damn reasons why we complain about maps in ground forces and in air and why we ask for so many different events and different game modes all the time. Because people are sick of the general team deathmatch and three capture zones. It's utterly ridiculous. I don't understand. It just... I've been playing this game for seven years now. Keep that in mind, too. And because Garjan develops everything in, in all in house, right? No idea where the guy got shot from, but that person's about to be reloaded now. But because Garjan developed everything map wise in house now, they, they externalize everything else, so everything is outsourced, right? A, mo a model for a vehicle can cost you 10,000 US dollars on average, depending on the, the high-quality stuff that Garzen require, right? So they got to earn that money back somehow. There is a business model here thing at, at, at play somehow, in some retrospects, and that makes sense because, again, it is a free-to-play game. But then they have rare event vehicles, right? Where they sell them as a once-off. Now, I'm guilty of buying this, and I, I did my video on this, but I find it fucking funny that they made a hundred and what was it, hundred and twenty-five thousand US dollars in a space of like six hours because people wanted a rare exclusive vehicle that they'd said they'd only sold uh, 
before, you know, ground forces were released. I don't know. This this game is full of problems. Those problems never seem to ever uh, go anywhere. They seem to fix things by adding more things, and I don't know about you, but I don't think that's the way you should be fixing the majority of things. Anyway, whoever started me on this rant, fuck you. <laughs> um, look, where I'm coming from stems from seven years of playing a game. Seven years of putting up with the community's terrible ideas. Seven years of putting up with Gaussian's terrible ideas. I believe one of the best decisions they made in recent times was to hire uh, content creators, Oxy and Mike Goes Boom. They're now content partner managers. But even saying that, I'm very fortunate in the fact that Garzan doesn't restrict the freedom of information like it once did a few years ago. However, they are very selective about what they tell each particular patch about. And even as a creator, I find it my due responsibility to sometimes vent my frustrations, even if it is naval forces as a whole. There are plenty of issues to talk about with ground, plenty of issues to talk about with air. Um, they've all got their own problems. It seems like gaussian has got their too many fingers in their one pie to, to really sort of soak up and fix one particular issue. You couldn't get 10 content creators in the same room and to say, okay, we need to fix the uh, UI uh, improvements. You, you wouldn't be able to get them all to agree on that one. You wouldn't be able to get them all to agree to have a different game mode because some like it more competitive, some like it more challenging, some like quick matches, some like really long ones, some like more engaging content like my Battle of Britain event that I did with Weeby for Fly Daily a month or so back. But it's, it, it's really hindsight and 2020 is one of those years where if you're not doing anything, if you're not changing or, or adapting to the times, things get really messy really fast. And because there are so many subsections of different communities, events, arcade people, realistic people, simulator people, and all the different across like game modes, like you've got air realistic, tanks realistic, sim you know, all this kind of stuff. The player base is incredibly divided. That doesn't help with decision making, unlike if it was with like one particular style of game where there'd be a multitude of issues, but everyone can agree on the same subset of issues comparatively. But it makes me furious that the game really hasn't changed a whole lot in seven years. And as a content creator, I am struggling to progress past this game and move on to other things. I haven't found that, that's on me. I think I failed as a content creator, even though in reality I have much more opportunity than I, you know, first initially realise. Bomber cockpits, bombers as a whole, repetitive team deathmatch uh, maps, maps rotation, map design, uh, just generally weapon loadout, balance loadout, economy, uh, high definition models, and, and and so on and so forth, cap modes, and different different things with maps, UI for example. There's too many things. Too many things. Uh, it, it just, ah, uh, ah. Uh. As one comment on the live stream said, to be honest, the only reason why they stopped playing this game was there were other things to do. It's a sad fact that many people will just be playing the game and not have an alternative to this game that gets you by making you feel like you have to keep playing due to the effort you've put into it. And you've got to see it through, but in reality you're just trading water. Why? Because they add more stuff at the top tier to keep you hooked. It's why the game gets away from doing all the horrendous economy things to people so far uh, included. But it's a mixture of feelings here. On one hand, I love making War Thunder videos. On the other hand, they're easy to make. However, they are not easy to branch out from. War Thunder is an incredibly niche game. It has a niche following of around 80 active thousand members on about 60 to 80 thousand players on any given day, maybe 100 thousand if there's a rare event going on or a new update. But as one of my other users said in my chat, hindsight is 2020. And then he said 2021 is up for review, which I thought was funny. And when asked if I loved this game, I said, and I quote uh, this next clip you're about to see here. I love this game. Charlie, I, I don't, I really don't. After seven years, I've had enough, you know, and I could drop everything today and start up a new channel and be like, yo, what's up? 
but there'd be no point because I have to earn all that back. And I've tried diversifying into other games, other game streams. And it's not really about how I feel as a whole. However, it could explain why you see so many content creators moving away from War Thunder and playing other things. Sure, there are vastly successful creators in this area doing War Thunder content. Fly, Dita, Bowtime, Dollar Plays, for example. There are a heap of fantastic streamers doing fantastic things. However, War Thunder is incredibly niche, and it's a community that is incredibly hostile to newcomers, and people don't really like change. Even with the partnership program changing so many times, and Galgen hiring Mike and Oxy, two fantastic creators, permanently to their team as content partner managers. And I still think that the majority of the negativity comes from the wider community as a whole, rather than individual creators. And I am contributing to that. And it's quite sad. Because I love this game, but I also hate it to death. And I wish it nothing but a painful death, but also a pleasant success, if you understand what I mean. And I've talked about these issues consistently. If you watch my Crash with Ash series, you'll know that I complain about War Thunder on a consistent basis. War Thunder, ultimately, is a War Thunder problem. And that's a simple short story of it. My goodness me, if that doesn't end up in a video, I don't know what will. Ash rants about naval and War Thunder's persistent issues. Volume 3062.